Hey guys and gals, welcome to Envision Prototypes, I'm Nick. Today we're going to be working on this front bumperette, or Nerf bar. Can't really call it a bumper, because we've got a bumper right there. It's more of a cosmetic piece that we're going to be adding to the front of this to break up this opening. This is just a stiffener here. And it's going to look kind of like this, but not like this, because this one was too small. We bent this up way back, a whole bunch of episodes ago, and just looking at it, it just didn't look right. So we've actually enlarged it. Before we get into this, I'm gonna take your, oh yes, no hole. Keeping it nice and smooth, nice and simple. Looked at it, thought about it, less is actually more, so it's good. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna take you off the pod, the tripod that is. We're gonna go around the car and kind of bring you up to date as to what's going on. As you can see, we're getting really close to paint. We need to block this out with 400 one last time and then off to paint. So, really exciting times. All right, let's go for a little walk around. So as you can see, we've got the trim fabricated for around the windows, as well as down the body side. This window trim outlines the window opening. We're gonna have a cut through here so we can open the door. And that post there, as well as the one that's part of the door, see that? That's gonna be behind the glass, so you won't see that. Glass will be tinted and it'll hardly be visible. And as for the trim down the side, you can see it starts off at the handle there and extends back. Those little marks are where the fasteners are on the inside. Extends back all the way around, pardon the post, and towards the back of the car. There's gonna be a joint here, as well as one over there. We're still working on the passenger side trim. Uh, it's down there somewhere on the running board. So just fine tuning things, get into fit. We need to take and make a little correction in here, have it flow into the body. But as you can see, things are really shaping up. Trunk cylinders are in, holding up the deck lid there. So that's all good. We need to take and mount the subwoofer, the amp, try and get as much of the fabric done as possible before paint, of course. If you want to be fabricating on a freshly painted car. Anything on the inside we can show you? Uh, not really, we're still working on the door panels and all those pieces, doing all the welding for them and kind of fine tuning them. Uh, we'll get them installed later on, pre-fit everything, make sure everything works, and then we'll go ahead and uh, upholster that. I'll probably show you guys what's going on once we get all fitted up. And as for the front here, we've got the wiper motor mechanism mounted. Uh, it used to sit way down, uh, the Infinity had their two points here for the pivots. We've adapted things so that they work with the wiper mechanism for the 51 Ford. And uh, that's all been taken care of. My dad fabricated a bracket. Uh, there should be a template around here somewhere. Ah, right there. So that's basically what he started with and worked that out in sheet metal to fit into this space here. This piece across the front, the brace, the fender to fender, that's all been finished. It's uh, being sanded out and worked on off the car. So a lot of stuff has happened and a lot of stuff is gonna be happening today with this front bar. We'll get this done up. So hopefully we can work things out. Let me get you back on the tripod. All right, that wasn't too bad I hope. I wasn't shaking too much. Uh, new camera, so the bit of a learning curve behind it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we get some pieces. So we've got one of many templates I've been working on. This is actually going to be the size of the bar that comes in like that. And it's going to come right up to the grill. I don't want a big gap on the back side of the bar. So it's going to mate up nicely with the grill, uh, the mesh, which is up on the wall behind me. It's going to go through here, cover up all that. And uh, it's going to sit just like that. I believe the center of the of this bar is going to be the top edge of uh, this reinforcement piece here. So basically the center lines up with the cut line for the split between the fender and the fascia. And for the sides it'll taper off just like that and wrap a little bit around the corners, not too much. Uh, it'll be a bit much, maybe a bit dated for the style we're going with to wrap it all the way around to hide that. So it'll just peter out on each side. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna cut up four pieces and then we can start shaping them and joining everything together. So this is gonna have a bit of a convex arc upward. Sit just like that. 
This is the template I just showed you on the front of the car, and it progressed from a series of previous templates that were a bit smaller. The thought was it extends into the grill area, and you won't have a big gap between the grill and the bumperette. I call it a bumper, but it's a, it's a feature bar, Nerf bar. I had mentioned that we're gonna create this out of four pieces, two top, two bottom pieces, instead of um, one complete top piece. Reason for that is I wanna create a peak in this feature bar, so that the feature that extends down from the top of the hood, the peak in the hood, extends down through this bar and down to the bottom fascia area because all that has been peaked. So this has to have a peak as well. It would look kind of strange, I think, if this was just a smooth curve around the outside and everything else was peaked. Now I'm tracing these templates onto a piece of 16 gauge. 16 gauge I can still work with my English wheel. Uh, we built a bumper for a 40 Ford sedan delivery, a four door sedan delivery, and that was formed out of one eighth material. And that had to be done manually because I uh, couldn't wheel it too well. A little bit, but the, uh, the, the wheel didn't like it too much. So 16 gauge is just right for this bumperette. That's uh, basically a five mile an hour bumper. If you hit anything any harder, it'll deform, but uh, it's more of a feature piece. Anyway, there's four pieces right there. We'll get them cut out and start shaping them. This shear maxes out at 16 gauge as well. One eighth, we need a plasma. A little bit of weight there. I get all this cleaned up. Going for the fan effect. Okay, four pieces cut out. Clean up these scraps. Not the holiday season yet, so we can't re-gift these pieces to anybody. You know, earrings or, I'm kidding. Just in case. Now, these are some pretty sharp points. You know, do you feel that? Gotta be careful. We'll address those later on. Right now, what we're gonna be doing is a whole bunch of shaping. A whole lot of shaking going on, or 
shaping, shaping going on. The other one's a song. Yes, I know I'm dating myself. Uh, we should start indicating what's top and what's bottom. That's going to be the top, passenger side. Let's put it out here. Top, passenger side. When I wheel this, I, I don't want this transferring to my upper anvil. Believe it or not, yes, your Sharpie will transfer onto your anvils. Uh, passenger side. This is top, driver's side. That's bottom, driver's side. And first thing we're going to do is throw the rubber wheel in there and pray that it does some shaping for us. Uh, I've done it before, I know it will. So here we go. So what do you think of the profile view of the Ford? Is it shaping up? Put down in the comments, let me know what you think. We don't have the glass in it yet, but uh, we do have the templates all cut out, ready to be cut. See, that poor upper wheel is really working hard, but that's okay. We're just gonna keep doing this until the 16 gauge gets the shape we want. I want to give it, it's got to look good, right? It can't be just flat sheet metal welded together. It has to have a nice curve to it. Yeah, those side trim pieces, it was really no different than bending up all the rods for a wireframe buck. Just a whole lot of grunting and groaning and uh, it was all manually bent using a vise. Uh, couldn't really put it through a roller because of the shape. Uh, I should actually show you. Get a piece of cutting and see, show you the shape of the parts. Alrighty, so there we are. We have, that's the center bar that goes down the center of the car. And you can see the taper on it so that the LEDs fit on either side of it. And basically use the table saw to rip down both sides. So. That wasn't too bad. And curving it around again, we used the vise, and then we had to take and smooth out all the little bumps that we created. Now this piece here around the windows, a little bit more complicated. Um, you can see it's got a bit of a chamfer. We rounded the corners a bit. And this actually sits up in the pinch weld at the top of the door or top of the window, back window there. And we drilled and tapped the backside and put uh, bolts in so that we can actually fasten this to the car. So this was a bit more complicated, especially forming it around those openings. It was all done with no heat, just arms and a lot of grunting and groaning. Like we are getting some shape in this. It's not bad. You know, bear down, give it some more pressure. And I'm just following the curve. Oh, that's better. We have of this panel. And yes, we have to get profile gauges set up for each to make sure each one is consistent. It's all part of the fun, you know. Icrometers don't work too well at uh, the later stage. I'm going to show you something. You guys probably won't believe it. See, so you can get talking and uh, this piece, I actually figured it out how I was going to build this while I was watching TV one night. This piece of paper, is all I had at the time, was, is that. So basically by taking and cutting out the profile I wanted, just an arbitrary curve at this point because I didn't have the card next to me, but what I thought would look good. And we give it a bit of a peek and we have the shape, well, that I'm after. So there we go, yeah. So next thing was to just make it out of sheet metal. And there's our right and left pieces. See, you don't necessarily have to make this out of one piece because it will be peaked anyway, so. so just because you don't have some sheet metal doesn't mean that you can't figure stuff out. Piece of paper works quite well. Okay, that's enough for this for now on this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
a little bit of a buckle there, but we can take care of that. I'm going to shape up the rest of these pieces in the wheel here. And then we're going to put the uh, hard anvils back in and give it a little more curvature. Okay, so as you can see, we have a nice shape happening here. They still have to be trimmed and cleaned up and all that stuff, but we are well on our way. So let me go ahead and shape up the rest of these pieces. Two, one more top, two more bottom, and then we can start uh, mocking things up after we get some more shape into it with the hard anvils. Well, still rolling, and we're getting closer. So I'm going to finish this piece up. And I've already started clamping the parts together, well, the top pieces together on the bench there. And you see how it looks. Now you can see the ends are kind of curling up because we kind of still have a banana on our hands. There's no shape. It has shape, but it doesn't have the right shape. We need this to be relatively straight across the front, but then as it comes around the side of the car, around the fender, it rolls down. Now I should tape it, but I think if we're really careful, we won't need it. Um, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. See how close that's getting there? And that's because the shape isn't where it needs to be just yet. So we have about a three quarter inch space at this opening here, and it gets tight there. That's because this is curving down. So we've got to level that out like that, twist it like that. And that'll open it up for us. See, it made a difference already. I can actually get my well, quarter inch there. Oops, there. Look at that. So I twisted it and now we slid in a little bit further. So what we're gonna do is get this on the table. The width doesn't seem to be bad. So our template did its job in terms of center line. We may open up this space on either end yet. We have room to open that up. Uh, thinking and presenting is a bit of a challenge sometimes. There we go. So we're going to get this on the bench, put a few tacks on it so that we're level. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom. Get a couple tacks on it. And I'm not going to be, I can put screws on it. See the thing with screws or goes or whatever you want to use to temporarily pin it, it could move. I don't want this moving. I can always cut the tacks later if we need to make an adjustment. Like we are really, really close. There's that word again, really. I think we had a word of the day and that was really, it's really old. Okay. I might put some tape on this. I do not want to scratch anything. All right. See, once we get some welds on it, I will not be able to wheel this through my, well, I refuse to wheel anything with a weld through my English wheel. Those anvils have been going strong since I bought them. Uh, the gentleman who made them for us did an amazing job. He still, from what I understand, makes them. If you're interested, I can send you a link. Uh, but like I said, they weren't, they weren't cheap. All right, let's do it. If anything, we'll take and trim away some more of that material and uh, thin this thing out a bit. Yeah, we're moving, see? Even that clamp, yeah, I squeezed it really hard. It's still not doing what it needs to do. So I have to realign my center line marks. And I have the peak created. We might actually open this up a bit more, trim back on those ends. Give me a second. When you cut 16 gauge, the pieces really love to fly. All right, that's better there. I'm gonna open it up widthwise a little bit. That extra material that I added to the bottom, well, that's what I anticipated we would be doing. Oh, oh, wow. Oh wow, I like that. So that curvature looks a bit better. We'll trim that end up a little bit. Um, we can open up these curves. We can slide this apart. I have another half an inch here. We'll slide it apart a little more, cut the ends again. That'll give that curve a little more consistent gap and we should be good to tack it. 
people actually saw how many times you run to test fit a piece, they would think you're nuts. Yes, that's looking good right there. Yeah, we opened up on the ends, not a problem. That's going to be corrected. We can actually tuck the center just like that. And there we have it. Okay. If I don't move this, I said if I don't move this, yes. See that's out just a little bit there, out there. We have room, the same amount between my thumb here and the front fascia as we do between the area in front of my gut and the grill. So that's about half an inch about half an inch right there according to my acrometers and uh, that's it. So if I don't move this we can put a few tacks on it. Okay, we're going to do a test fit here. Kind of like that. Okay, so now we can nail the top here and we can work on the bottom piece and join the two sections together. It's an old pair. Okay, got all four sections tacked together, top and bottom. Now we take this one, flip it over. This overlap, we're gonna take care of that later, create the peak that we need. See how this is gonna to come together, I hope. There we go. This is about the most challenging part. Yes, very challenging. So with these pieces joined up, this being the bottom, actually the top, this being the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and find center, scribe it, cut it, and create our peak that I was talking about earlier. This front edge here is still kind of rough. It's a little bit long, intentionally. We're taking clean it up, and then we can take and join the two pieces together, fingers crossed.
Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and clean up this front edge. Just kind of strike a new line, just step back a bit and clean it up. Based on the template, you can see that that Sharpie line almost corresponds to the template. A little bit of variation, there's a bit of a hiccup there, but we're, we gave ourselves a little bit extra just so we can do this. Time to cut this off. Okay, we're done with the template. Make some room here. So we have our bottom. And we have our top. Technically, we should be able to bring them together on center and start tacking them and bring everything together. See that? It's coming in not too bad. biggest thing is to maintain a straight line. Let's we'll just put a tack on this so we can kind of get more hands and play around and see how the rest is fitting together. That's not bad. And there we have two pieces joined together. A little bit of a twist, see that? We're gonna straighten that out. And the other thing we're gonna do next, you see this sharp edge? Uh, not too safe if you ever hit somebody on the road. What we're gonna do is gonna round that off. Just roll it in. But as you can see, except for that twist, it's not looking too bad. The ends. Let's go see how it fits on the car. Top passenger side probably won't fit. Not too bad. Uh, center line is there. It's actually pretty good. We're gonna take in roll this raw edge inward, that's why I left it long, as well as this one, because you don't want sharp edges. So we still have a ways to go with this piece. But as you can see, it's taking shape quite nicely. All right, so let's get this front edge rounded a little bit. Let's show you how we're gonna do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I may put a few more tacks on it just so it stays together. Then we'll round it. Or perhaps we weld the whole thing and then we round it. I think we're going to go with the ladder. Not the ladder, but the latter. All right, I just finished welding this Nerf bar. Uh, we test fitted it with a few tacks earlier, made sure that everything was good on it. And then I flipped it upside down. This is the right way up, but flipped it upside down inside the vise and welded the inside seam from front to back. Basically one continuous weld from one end to the other. And uh, you see the has zone there. Pretty consistent, pretty clean. But next step is to take the big wolf and big grinder and start cleaning it up, grinding down that weld pride, proud, pride, I think it's proud. Just knocking that down, smoothing it out, and we can basically 
take down that point. Now one thing I did do was put the dolly in the vise, this one here, and kind of worked that bull nose down. Took away that sharp edge. You don't want a sharp edge on the front, so it took and knocked it down a bit, smoothed it out. 16 gauge, it's a little tough to work with, but we're getting there. Oh, sorry, got blurry. So right now, like I said, we're taking grind down that point where the two pieces of sheet metal come together. I don't know why my hand does that. And uh, we'll start finessing things and cleaning it up. And then we still have to roll the back edge so that there's no sharp sharpness there. It has a nice soft edge as well. So here we go. Let's start grinding. Take work this nice and slow. I don't want to grind off the weld. I just want to take and knock off that sharp point and create a radius. This is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to reclamp this in such a way that it doesn't uh, chatter as much. Put a piece of angle iron in the vise, clamp it to the angle iron, get rid of that wobble, and uh, just keep working this down until we get the radius we want. I do have to say, poor tipping wheel. 16 gauge, and <laughs> this tipping wheel don't get along too well, but we do have a V groove floor anvil which is helping matters. And I'm just following the top edge, which is, that was a weld, straight line, well, straight curve, I should say. And we are just about done. So there we are. I don't know if you guys can see it, very subtle, but we do have a bit, we're gonna be cleaning this up, it's kind of wavy but we do have the beginnings of a roll down. I'm gonna probably pass it through, uh, I don't know how many more times. Yeah. Yes. I think that's gonna be it. It's looking good. And it has a bit of a, pardon me while I push. This isn't the morning constitution either. All right. Hmm. One more time. I know I said that last time, but. See, once we get the track in, it's easy, easier to push. the tipping wheel. All right, that's gonna be it. That's very nice. Wow, all right, other side. Then we got the ends to do. All right, so we have, oh, that's a bit of a low spot here. We have to work that up. But aside from that, there's our bumper bar, Nerf bar. A little bit of, little bit of heft there. Uh, five mile an hour, maybe, we'll see. Okay, uh, let's correct this little low spot here, and then we can, that was not bad, but let's, uh, let's use a rubber pad, I think. And I think I'll do it on the floor. That's better. Not hard, just wanna, because the rubber mat allows it to give, I just want to bring it down, like that. See? This part over here is okay, it's in here. Oh yeah.
And that's the top there, looking really good. We'll touch that up a little bit yet because we brought the weld up so we can grind that flatter. Or is that the top? No, that's the bottom. That's the top. So we think and clean up all these edges, roll the ends, and then we can uh, make up some brackets and get this mounted on the car. Okay, and there we go. That's the top. Now this piece has a very slight arc upward. If we went and had a straight line across the front of the car, it would actually look like it's dipping down, smiling, I guess. But we want this to look straight, so in the way we did this, we used one of these pieces of hardwood, ripped it down to about 3 16 so you can run a quarter, you can even take it down to an eighth of an inch. And it's a fantastic way, instead of using a laser level, it's a fantastic way, because laser levels are straight, it's a fantastic way to establish curves, and you can even arc, arc, this piece, you gotta grab it further apart and give it that slight arc upward, uh, not a level straight line. So uh, these things are invaluable. Uh, we have various ones. And if you happen to break one, you cut another one on the table saw, no big deal. So you can see uh, the cut mark right there. So. Anyway, that's how we got the curve on this piece. And it was done before it was final welded. When we were tacking everything together, fitting it, tacking it, fitting it, tacking it, we got a lot of hours in this piece and it's just about there. So now I'm going to go ahead and make up some brackets, cut out some, um, uh, here, the template. So basically this is going to fit inside the profile and it'll get tacked once we get it mounted to the car in the right spot. So next step, cut these out. Now I'm going to use some 1 8 material. We got to lubricate that. And, ooh, I got a, something going on there. Wow, oh, look at that. Three inches exactly. So, what we're going to do is just plasma torch that off there. And I'll flip it around to the other side when it's nice and hot. I think I will freehand these pieces. One. Flip this over. Hot potato. Hot piece of steel. And here we are. Number two. Sorry if I don't bring you guys in any closer. I lost a camera because of this. There we go. As for this. So, there's our bumper.
Now, because we rolled the ends, our little template doesn't fit the way it should. Come on. So, I think we're going to take and knock those points off. All right, guys. Well, we've got the Nerf bar, bumper, whatever you want to call that, on the front, mounted. And let me tell you, that was quite the feat. But as you can see, let me get my finger in here, right there. See that line, that feature or that seam carries into the feature of the bumper around the front and then up the other side. Now it's going to be pretty tight to get in here, so I'm going to do my best to show you this way. There's going to be a mesh. Just step back here, so about a half inch between this sheet metal, 16 gauge, and the mesh, which mimics the half inch gap between the body and the bumper. So we got everything fine-tuned and that was tricky because we had to get in from the backside and tack that and there's no way you can get a MIG gun, a MIG torch, anything into there. Like even from the underside, there's just no way. So we had to actually take some very careful dimensions, pull the thing off, tack it off the car, get it back in, try it. If it worked, great. If not, well, this side here, we have to take and cut it apart, tweak it a little bit, tack it back on, try it, take it off, give that tack a little better weld, and refit it. And as you can see, we're not done yet, but it's really close. And like the other thing is, if you push down on this side, that side goes up, and vice versa. So it was a bit of a challenge to try, to try and finagle it into place. So right now, that's going to be metal finished and given a coat of high build and blocked out. A little bit of flex there. So once it's all on final welds, she's not going anywhere. So an adaptive cruise control module. We had to drop that. We're going to relocate that yet again because uh, this is more important than adaptive cruise control. This car is a driver. I like to have the foot in the gas and not rely on the car to do the work. Anyway, that's it for the front bumper. Next time uh, we bring you guys in, she's going to be painted. Don't worry, we still have a little more metal work to do. We have the engine cover to finish. You know, no way we can do all this work out here and not finish the interior there, the engine compartment. So, all right, I don't know if my hands are shaking, but I'm pretty excited. Pretty tired, and well, that's gonna be it. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up. Hopefully, you get an appreciation as to what's involved in creating a bumper. It's a heck of a lot of work, but uh, there you go. See you next one, guys.